let's go back to what I was reading, which we were at the different card meetings. And I'm just going to run through the different sections that they have really quick, and then I'll pull the cards out. So the first direction that they uh, feature is east. I'm really sure it's called near. I mean, there's a lot of things going on. Um, east is the direction of the dawn, of new beginnings and fresh ideas. Hence, this is where the deck begins. This direction corresponds with the element of air and thus with knowledge, intellectual matters, and thoughts. And it looks like there are ten cards for each uh, section. The next direction is south. South is the direction of heat of the midday sun. When ideas range, excuse me, when ideas reach fruition and succeed, <laughs> it's five in the morning. <laughs> when ideas reach fruition and success is reached, the south corresponds with the element of fire and thus with passionate drive and creativity. <laughs> the girl was fine when I turned the camera on. I don't know. West. West is the direction of the element of water and the emotions. The cards from the this direction speak of relationships, intuition, and reflection. From the West, we may learn the wisdom of natural endings, gentle healing, bubbling joy, and profound resolution. I zeroed it on the turtle. <laughs> North. North is the direction of the element of Earth and of the physical formative realm. The cards from this direction speak of nurturing, health, finances, and security. From the north, we may learn the wisdom of simplicity, grounding, strong roots, and healing rest. It also combines um, the season that pertains to the direction. So, for instance, north begins with winter. So the next section that we have is above. <clears throat> Grateful for my tea. <laughs> I actually got in the tea. Sarah's Wiley right now. It always does that whenever I like come out of with scissors, which I did. <laughs> right. Above. To gaze upwards on a clear night is to look into the depths of infinity. The realm of the planets and stars which surround us as we float through space on the tiny green gem of Earth. We now move beyond the earthly directions of east, south, west, and north, and their elemental correspondences, and look to the influences of the heavens. The celestial bodies included within this section are not the complete solar system, but rather the traditional seven wandering stars known by the ancients, which relate to our days of the week, various deities, and planetary intelligences. Their presences can be felt throughout our lives, whether we are aware of them or not. But making ourselves consciously aware of their influence can empower all aspects of our lives. This would be considered the celestial realm. Because it is. <laughs> and then we have below. The average person does not excuse me, does probably not much consider the importance of the realm beneath their feet, nor would they likely be aware of the spiritual beings that inhabit it. 
Most people who consider spirituality tend to look to the heavens above, hoping for ascension and escape from the earthly realm. The spiritual realm below our feet, however, offers its own riches, guides, and wisdom, giving us the opportunity to strengthen our roots so that our branches may reach even higher. The next we have is within. The last of the seven cosmological directions is within. If we consider that each of us stands at the center of our own universe and that we contain the universe within us, that becomes a difficult concept to try and capture in ten cards, transparent or not. The cards from this direction will therefore deal with the different ways in which the self relates to the world and the network of interconnectivity that is created through our web of communication and receptivity. These involve elemental correspondences, including the fifth element of spirit and the energy centers of the body known as the chakras. These cards deal with some quite abstract concepts that do not lend themselves easily to simple and easy to understand images. Therefore, with the exception of the 6-9 DNA and number 70, the web, they show the face and hands. The two significant parts of our outer selves which reflect the inner within energy lines and patterns or different parts emphasized in color. These are beautiful. So it looks like at the back of the book, they offer suggestions on different ways to read the cards. And then they give one, two, three, three different spreads. A here and now spread. Axis Mundi spread and the chakra spread. And after each of these, they provide little notes, which I think is really nice. So let's open up the, the deck and see what we've got going on here. Um, this particular deck also comes with a little white sheet, which I think is nice. are much larger than I thought they would be. Like usually everything. You guys should have seen when I ordered my ring light. <laughs> I thought it was going to be the picture. That was going to be the size of the picture that was on the box. So when I picked up the box, I was like, what is this? <laughs> Here's the white sheet. Each one, Oops. you would need a white sheet, so it's good they provide it. These are really awesome. element of air. So, um, for any readers who are going to get the stack, I think it's probably pretty important to get yourself um, 
or have a way uh, to put the camera above so that they can see the cards. Putting them together, they're very easy to shuffle. So I'm just gonna kind of pull them apart here because some of these are stuck together. I usually actually have two cameras set up, but I wasn't actually planning on um, getting on, and then Spirit kind of got sneaky with me, so, um, yeah. So I think that uh, there's a little bit of a weird feel to it. I think I read something about needing to clean them off. exactly sure where I saw it. I don't know if it was at the back of the book or the front. There it is. Um, when using the cards, you will need a good clean white surface, such as cloth or plain paper, preferably not a hard surface that may scratch the cards. For the most three-dimensional effect, you may wish to acquire a light box. They are available in variety sizes. When you use the cards, you may notice a tendency for them to stick together, even sometimes a thin layer of oily residue. Just give each card a good swipe with a clean cloth before you use, and after a few shuffles, the, soon, the problem will soon diminish. Um, the lovely thing about the plastic cards is that you can give them a gentle wash with soapy water if you wish, just no abrasive cleaners or wire sponges. You can even take this deck into the bath with you. It's been done, and in parentheses she says by me, so that's really cute. Alright, so I'm just going to pull these apart. Um, they do have quite a, a residue on them. It's not sticky on your hands, but it will make a difference in shuffling, I think. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, um, I would definitely, I'm gonna go get some Windex and wipe it down. Uh, maybe not Windex. <laughs> Windex has got a lot of chemicals on it. Um, I've got a, a soap that's actually got infused oils from crystals as well, so probably use that or maybe some moon water with some um, infused soap. But yeah, they're definitely telling me not Windex. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I will have to return to do a reading with these cards just because they're going to require a little bit of love and tender care before I present them to the world as a reading. But uh, when you see these together, just to show you how cool it looks, there's just three different cards together. So, alright, I'm going to take my leave. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing. If there are other things that you would have liked to know about the deck that I didn't cover, just leave a comment and I can cover it in my other decks because I have 50 plus more and this is going to be a series. So thank you so much for your time and your space and presence and being here. I appreciate you. I hope that you drive yourselves well, my friends. Namaste.